It's not feasible, say the ancient lost high technologists. This will deal with stone cutting, and the, well, the argument used to be it's impossible, then it was proven that it's possible, and they've moved to it's not feasible, which is a wishy-washy topic. A uh, wishy-washy word means nothing, but is it feasible? Well, great-grandpa, that was his job. He was very feasible, using a hand-powered saw. Uh, here are some fellas cutting a giant block with a hand-powered saw. They were very feasible. They, this was their job. This was their livelihood. They didn't have the machines, or the machines were too expensive at the time. As photography come in, the machines were developing as well. But we saw relics of the old way of doing things caught on photo. And it's not just one spot or another. This was just standard practice. These Our ancestors were very feasible with, with their work and the, the things they did and the blocks and the slabs that they cut in the countless uh, n numbers across the world. These fellas were very feasible um, as well. I'm sure they'd be you know, very happy to hear that these lazy-ass new guys who have to call the roadside assistants to change a radio station are now telling them that they were not feasible, that they did not do this work. But this was not the way that that the world was not so long ago. You know, it's these are the kids who are telling grandpa how to have kids. Uh, lost ancient high technologists just went, uh, illustration show you this as well. So then I say, oh, well, these are just drawings and this is just written down. But now we have the pictures as well. So when you hear that it's not feasible, um, you know instantly they, they just don't know what they're talking about. That clip was an example of a pendulum saw in not just in ancient Egypt but in uh, Crete and the Minoan civilization they found these giant circular saw marks as they are called so therefore the people of uh, the Minoan people must have had advanced lost ancient high technology and machines as well uh, well this experiment, just one that's been conducted, can create these so-called impossible machining cuts. And now we're using a bronze blade in limestone. But let's look at granite examples as well, because I've done the same with a slightly different simplified method in granite to create the same giant circular saw mark as well as those impossible striations. One of the experiments I conducted myself to again this should be this should have been the work done over the last two decades by the lost ancient high technologists uh, i took a copper pipe i flattened it out and made a, a straight blade but i knew just from a little bit of experience in life that as long as i don't carry it right over the end that it's going to create a, an apparent giant circular saw mark so a straight blade will create a circular mark there you see the end result so the, well, the front and the back of a blade is where the most pressure is exerted and so it creates this apparent giant circular saw mark so my straight copper blade become a curved copper blade and created this type of mark so it would, it's just like you know get a piece of steel and a bit of softwood rub it back and forth you're not going to create a perfect trench with 90 degrees but you know, the center is going to get worn out more because the blade's in constant contact and the edges of a blade's going to get worn out more because as you're pushing forward and pulling back that's where the pressure goes. Link in a description to the experiment where I've got the video of it as well. Uh, this is easily repeated and again this should have been uh, re done earlier by the ancient lost high technologists uh, or at the very least they should have covered these types of experiments but they're very good at censoring this because it doesn't fit their narrative but there we see the giant circular, you know, this would be a 20 foot circular saw blade that I used with a in, piece of copper and abrasive sand and uh, began with a straight blade. This was my very very first experiment uh, working with copper and granite you can see the striations there. Now with further experiments I did with drilling granite with copper tubes um, 
I now have the because I worked with crushed sandstone, crushed granite, corundum, and other abrasive and abrasive mixes. And because I had done it a few times, I can now tell you what type of striation you're going to get based on the abrasive that you're using and whether you're going to use the wet or the dry method. And so there's a closer up coming into focus. Um, but again, yeah, now because of the high amount of white quartz that I put in there in the abrasive mix, it created a more polished look. If you want deeper abrasive, um, deeper grooves, I, uh, and as I use later, um, basically a higher corundum or granite mix, but it's, and it's not just the abrasive, it's the type, the size of the grit, so how big are the little particles of sand that you put in there, and how freak, frequent, frequently you replace those. So you can put in some rough stuff and wear it down to dust. Or, again, how it's not just the material, it's also the technique that's going to change those things. So giant circular saw blades, striations, granite with copper, my very first experiment and again this not only should it not be censored uh this should be should have been done earlier by ancient lost tire technologists and at the very least repeated by them if they were genuinely interested in the truth that is but it's, uh, it's going to ruin their profits um, if they actually get involved in experimentation truth and, and evidence and and this whole messy stuff of you know actually doing work per hour they use a gang saw to cut slabs thinner than five centimeters. This saw has steel blades, tense enough not to bend under the pressure of cutting and calibrated to cut as straight as possible. The gang saw cuts at a rate of about eight square meters per hour. It takes three entire days to cut through the rough block. These are not unexplained, impossible without you know advanced high technology uh, types of saw marks. These are modern saw marks, and just from the profile of them, you can tell it's done from a gang saw. They're running parallel uh, with each other, and well, they're not curved; they're straight because the gang saw action, unlike a pendulum saw action, goes back and forth, and it runs over the edge of the stone, and it runs over the edge of the other stone. So that's how you can create these type of marks, and I've done that experiment as well. But also I did an experiment to find out how long it would take in granite with primitive tools to grind out these saw marks, and that, that half an hour would more than enough for the area that you're working on. If you're working with a bigger polishing stone, you'll do a bigger area, but it's very, very feasible. Links, of course, are in the description to the videos, but I, from that earlier cut, I also did um, an effective drag saw cut so that the blade was longer than the, the cut itself so it creates not the curve but the straight lines and uh, in basalt so again you can see the impossible to replicate mysterious striations um, in there as well but also notice the different profiles of cutting I was running two blades consecutively so it was a drag saw cut um, sorry a gang saw drag saw is one blade gang saw is a gang of blades and also I did them at the same time so again you can use you can cut a lot more just by adding blades there you see the profile of the two blades i was cutting with and the groove the mark that it left there in the basalt um, it's not an unexplained mystery it's a very easily solved mystery and even just with a bit of critical thinking and experience and you know and logic you would be able to work it out but of course to be certain multiple independent experiments what, what are they going to get they're going to get the same results therefore it's not a hypothesis or a conjecture it's a theory just like with the striations i can predict through experience what the effect will be of these different blades shapes thicknesses and the way that they're used i i know it for a fact i've done it and so again challenge to any of the lost ancient high technologists we can do these experiments in a live stream you don't have to spend weeks we can get the principles in a one or two hour live stream but i won't be holding my breath on that another common uh, tactic narrative by the ancient lost high technologists is to say well it's not feasible well it is feasible because that's just how it was done in in, in up to the age of photography 
But then they'll say, well, how much, they must have gone through so much copper and it just would be mountains of copper. When they ask how much copper did they go through using these type of blades on granite or basalt or sandstone or limestone, simple answer, zero. You don't lose any copper. The copper gets caught up in the abrasive grit, then you pan it out and you get all of your copper back. So again, how much copper was lost? Zero. How fast could I cut through basalt? And a pretty nasty, you know, it's uh, as far as it's pretty hard basalt, but um, up to 11 mils per hour. But since I was working on my own, I had to stop to add abrasive and water along the way, and the blade was not weighted. The only weight pressure on the blade was coming from my hand pushing down on it, but my hand was out in front of me. I wasn't sitting on top of it using my body weight just the weight of my hand, so this speed could be increased. How fast could I cut through granite? Same issues as with the basalt, I had to stop and pause to add the abrasive. You're best off to have a two-man team, so one guy works for 15 minutes, half an hour, swaps over with the other man so that you, you, know, you can work the full day and have a bit of a rest in between. Um, again, I could have, my strokes could have been faster and I had no weight to the top of a blade as well. So this is a minimum rate. You could do much better, and especially if you had a two-man team, so you can swap out and get a bit of a, a rest in between. But uh, 11 mil for basalt, eight mil for granite per hour. This is a very feasible rate. This is uh, almost competitive with modern gang saws. So a modern feasible gang saw using steel blades, weighted with a diamond abrasive and a pump that just keeps circulating the abrasive through, 25 mils per hour. I get 8 mils per hour on granite as well with a handsaw which I could have weighted down and I should have a second man in the team just to help so I don't have to pause to put the abrasive in and, and just to keep fresh. Very feasible. It's the way the world used to be. So it, modern gang saw, three days, well it took them nine days. So what? What's the big deal? Okay, so here's the long and short of it. Our ancestors and their works and what they did to build the world that we now have the privilege of living in was very feasible. Not theoretical, this is how it was done. This is what they had to go through to get us to a point now where we can pick up power tools and complain that, you know, it takes too long. Well, that's, they, had, they didn't have that privilege back in that time and yet they got the things done. What is not feasible is the lost ancient high technology narrative. And it is, a, it is a narrative because it's not based on actual evidence, it's not based on experimentation, it's not based on anything, it's an appeal to emotions. That Look at this block, it must have been the evidence of a cataclysm. Look at this, because therefore something lost ancient high technology, something, something, all the archaeologists are lying. The, the truth of it is that it's actually in the opposite direction. The lost ancient high technologists are not conducting any experiments, they're not showing you... Like God, God forbid they show you a gang saw, they'll show you a, 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 wire, a wire saw or a circular saw and say this is where... No, gang saws are still being used and just now that they're mechanised. But again, if they had any interest in stone masonry because their world orbits around this, these are the things that they should have been telling you years and years ago. But they're not. And not only are they not telling you, they're actively censoring this information. So we've gone a bit quiet on the lost ancient high technology because they've got a bit of a pushback and now they're moving to, well, it can't be lifted or something, something, cataclysm in the past or whatever, but they're going to have to go back to their bread and butter and they're not going to bring these things up. Or if they, if they do, they won't be genuine about them. They'll try and cast it in a particular way to, to fit their narrative. But uh, it is feasible. It doesn't matter what they... It's just the fact that you can experiment with yourself and compare to very modern standards or recent modern standards it's, it's more than feasible it's it's a ludicrous argument to say it's not feasible it's it means nothing it's a wishy-washy argument you know um and yeah the only thing's not feasible is the actual argument that they're presenting